Bismillah, alhamdulillah, you're watching Beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes. For the next few minutes, I wanted to continue something that I've been talking about right along. Is in Islam, it's offering this thing, I call it equity, because it's so much better than the word equality. We were talking about this with some folks the other day, and I was telling them about what had happened while I was visiting India. A doctor, a friend of mine there, was not a Muslim, very lovely person though, and we were talking and he said, you know, I like so many things about Islam, except the way Islam is treating the women. And I said, yeah. And then we got to talking about it and I explained that look what Islam is offering for women that's different from men for a reason. The fact that a woman and a man both have to bear witness to the testimony of Ashadu ila illallah, Shad Muhammad Rasulullah, meaning that there's only one God to worship, none others worthy of worship except Allah, and Muhammad's his messenger. But after that, there is something called Salah. The women and the men all have to do the Salah, except a woman doesn't do it during her menstrual cycle. Also, that during the time of the Ramadan, a woman doesn't have to fast during those days. And she can make up the days of fasting, but she never has to make up the days for uh, the Salah. Isn't that amazing? He said, yeah, I never thought of that. And then we continued, and I explained though in the Zakah, this is something where we all pay the same, because men and women are the same when it comes to the money. There's no difference. But when it comes to the pilgrimage, the woman, she doesn't even have to do the pilgrimage until she has a mahram. What is mahram? Anybody know? This is one who is like your chaperone or the one who is, you know, taking care of you when you travel like this, protecting you. Now, that could be her brother, that could be her father, that could be her husband, could be her grown son if she has one. And he can go along with her and take care of her needs, make sure nobody bothers her, help her through the things and difficulties of what Hajj is about, the pilgrimage. But it would be wrong, really, if you stop and think about it, to burden a woman and put that kind of load on her, expect her to travel by herself all the way to Mecca in the middle of Arabia, and she's got to go out and do all these things. Additionally, there's another point, too. In the pilgrimage, a man wears two towels. We have a big, you know, like sheet around the top and, a, and another one around the bottom of you, and you go and you do your pilgrimage, okay? But the woman, no. She wears her regular clothes, and it's still considered the garb or the uh, clothing of the pilgrimage. Now, in each and every one of these cases, a person with their logic, with their aql, with their mind, is going to say, you know, that makes sense to me. Okay, fine. So you can see now that Islam is treating a woman different than a man for what reason? Because Allah knows what he created. At the end of our little talk, this doctor, medical doctor, who was Hindu at the time, changed and he said, you know what? Islam is the only way of life. And I am ready to drop everything else and become a Muslim. And he did. And I've, uh, I was real pleased to hear the follow-up on this man. He's really doing something good in Islam. And he's showing good examples to the people, especially with regard to this topic. A lot of us, a lot of us don't know. Muslims, even themselves, don't really grow up understanding that Islam is something not just for you and I. It's not just for men. It's not just for Arabs. It's not just for some people 1400 years ago living in the desert. Islam, when it's properly understood, applies to every single creation of Allah. Not just every single person. It's every creation of Allah. Let's understand something about Islam. The beauty, the real beauty of Islam is that it works always. But you have to understand what it means, what it is. In our other programs we've talked about it, it doesn't hurt to mention it again. The word Islam doesn't have an equivalent in the English language. You have to understand that Islam is from the verb aslama. And this is to do what? It is to totally and completely surrender, submit, obey, in sincerity, and peace. Now look at that, you got five words. And you don't get this peace until you do the others. Because this is not just like peace on earth, goodwill to man. It's not just like peace in the Middle East, although we wish you had that. But when a person surrenders to Almighty Allah, and when they obey His commandments, and when they totally and completely give in in sincerity to Him, then and only then do they get this peace. And this peace is a result of this. And it means no matter what happens to them, good or bad, they're going to be satisfied with it. They're going to be happy with it. They're going to feel good about it. They'll be in peace with their Lord about it. 
Why? Because that is what you were intended to do in the beginning. So the word Islam means that everything is doing what God wants it to do according to his will. And if you understand that, if that makes sense to you now, then think about this. Everything created, every planet, every star, every moon, every tree, every rock, every flower, every animal in existence in this universe is doing what? It is doing what Allah wants it to do. Therefore, the creation is all in Islam. It doesn't just mean the name of a religion that came with somebody 1400 years ago. Aslama, or the submission to God in peace, is the total understanding. And this is one of the beauties of Islam. I want you to sit there for a minute and think about this. I'm going to take a break, and we want to come back, and I want to give you the conclusion behind this. So stay right there and watch more beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. We're back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. <laughs> We've been talking about this subject. <laughs> My favorite subject to talk about in these beauties is, is the subject of equity versus equality. And we were talking about what happens when somebody really understands how everything is in Islam already anyway. Everything is doing what it's supposed to do. The problem is that the human being is making wrong choices. And there's where the real problem comes about. The creation of Allah is perfect. There's nothing wrong with Allah's creation. There's nothing wrong with the way everything is running and operating. But there's something wrong in the mentality and the hearts of the human beings. That's where the real problem comes in. <laughs> and uh, Islam is showing us, in making it clear for us, to see what the problem is, and most of all, how to correct the problem. We've now understood that the difference between, for instance, men and women in Islam has to be there. Because why? A man and a woman are not the same. There never was such a thing as a man and a woman really being the same. Women have babies. Men don't have babies. Women have a monthly cycle. Men don't have a monthly cycle. Some woman told me she thinks men are having it all the time because of our attitude, but that's another story. I just was thinking about this, though, from the standpoint that here I am, a human being, trying to understand and comprehend the whole universe, which we haven't even explored yet. And Allah is the one who created it all in the first place. We'll never fathom that, will we? So it's more important for us to really focus on what's my job. I don't need to worry about what's Allah's job, do I? I need to worry about what is my job. What am I supposed to be doing? And that's where the equity really starts to kick in. Allah, God Almighty, has told us something in the Quran. I wish you would look at this. It's in chapter 51, verse 56. Al-Dariyat is the name of the surah or chapter. And Allah says in the Arabic language, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون This is a famous verse and many people refer to it. According to most of the translators it says Allah has only created the jinn and mankind to worship him. Immediately though, so that you can understand, this doesn't mean that a person is supposed to go sit in the church or the temple or the synagogue or the mosque and just sit there and go, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. This is not the implication whatsoever. The word ibada that's used here in this statement is actually more than just worship. 
as in doing this or this. What it's talking about is that in all that we do, we recognize that it is our Creator who has put us here, and what we do, we do to please Him. In other words, my job, my education, having a family, taking care of my house, my vehicle, my transportation, whatever I'm doing, my work, becomes a form of worship. Can you imagine this? Now, this is where the equity really starts to kick in. Because it means that if I comply with the rules and regulations and commandments of Almighty God, in all of the things that I do, then everything I do counts as what? It will count as worship. It doesn't matter. For instance, I want you to think about this. Suppose that a man is getting up early in the morning. He says his prayers. Okay, that's worship as in the restricted worship. That you must get up, you must do this on time. But then after that, he goes to his car, gets in and he drives to work. Is that worship? Actually, in Islam, it would be. Why? Because he has a job which is considered permissible or halal, and he's th driving his own car which he has purchased with his money which is halal. So even this going to work can be worship for him. Listen to this. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us an act of worship can be something as small as just removing the trash out of the way, removing obstructions out of the way of the believers. Can you imagine I, I could get a reward for moving trash out of the way? And Islam has taught us that. Even look at this. Smiling. It's called Ibtisam. In Arabic language, smile is Ibtisam. Huh? This is an act of worship. To give a smile in the face of your brother is an act of worship. <laughs> because everything you do, as long as it complies with what Allah has given us as instruction, you'll be paid for it as worship. But it means also at the same time to be careful of the things that we've been forbidden to do. In other words, if I'm buying my car on credit and paying out interest on it, this is not something in Islam. So this would be a problem for me. And if I have a job which is not a halal or permissible job, people selling alcohol, people dealing in the forbidden things, then this would not be a reward for you. So it's important for the Muslim to know what is permitted and what is forbidden. And then what he's doing throughout his life all becomes an act of worship for him. Many of the things that I've been talking about may seem strange to you. Some of them you may be familiar with. But when you really think about it, it all makes sense. There's no part about any of the beauties of Islam except that it will come back to you and, and it sits on your mind like what? Like a delicious flavor on your tongue. And you say, you know, that makes sense to me. This all makes sense. It's very plain. Because we're not going to try to compare everything to everything else and say, everything's equal, has to be equal. No, we want something better than equal. We need equity. And that's what we've been talking about in this particular facet of the beautiful diamond called Islam. And that is one of the beauties of Islam. There's so many more things we want to talk about. We hope you'll visit our website. It's called beautiesofislam.com. And for more of that, check out our website. And be sure to come back right here with us on this station and watch more about the beauties of Islam. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam is peace. Islam is peace.